Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth lecture of the course. In the previous lecture, we had recapitulated the content that we had shared already in UHV2 and we took a look at the two uh, realities, human being and the existence. We recapitulated that human being is coexistence of self and body. The needs, activities and response of the self and body are entirely different. In particular, we talked about the response of the self and we saw that there are four activities in the response of the self, knowing, assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. So long as the self is operating with assuming, recognizing and fulfilling, the self is in problems. But when the knowing part is ensured, the self is resolved. We also saw the role of education in taking the human being, that is the self, from the domain of problem to the domain of resolution. Going further, we took a look at the activities of the self and we talked about the state of the self living with animal consciousness and the state of the self living with human consciousness. So we saw that there are two blocks of activities in the self. One is the block of imagination, where we have five activities. And then there is another block of uh, knowing that is realization, that is right understanding and right feeling. So if the self is active only in the block of imagination and the block of right understanding is not activated, then the self is living with animal consciousness. And there are three major sources of the imagination. One is the sensation, the other is preconditioning, and the third is natural acceptance. But when the right understanding and right feeling is ensured in the self, then there is harmony in the self and there is no longer enslavement of preconditioning and sensation. And the conduct of the self is definite. The conduct of human being is definite. Recapitulated this part, we took a look at harmony in the existence and we saw that the whole nature is collection of units and the units are submerged in space, which is all pervading, which is no activity. The self is one part. <clears throat> In the nature, there are two kinds of units, material units and consciousness units. All these units are submerged in space. And these units are there in four orders, physical order, bio order, animal order, and human order. We also saw that the scope for development is there in only the consciousness unit that is there, the, that is the self coexisting with the body making the human order. And this is what education is for. So having recapitulated this, so having talked about this, we saw that self is essentially the unit in the nature which is going to develop and the self is central to human existence. Now in this lecture, we'll talk further about how self is central to human existence. So today's lecture is lecture five of module one, where we are taking an introduction to the entire course. We'll be talking about the human being again, and we'll see how self is central to human existence, while the body is an instrument of the self. So we had seen already that human being is coexistence of self and body, self being the conscious entity, and the body being a material entity, their activities are different, needs are different, response is different. In the body, we can see that there are only two kinds of response, recognizing and fulfilling. While in the self, we have knowing and assuming in addition to recognizing and fulfilling. And it is knowing and assuming that uh, makes the self conscious while the body is material. Going further, if you observe the coexistence of self and body, you see that there is exchange of information between self and body. The self, which is the conscious unit, is sending instructions to the body and the body is sending sensation to the self. No. Going further, we can see how self and body are coexisting. So the self that is the conscious unit is sending information to the body in the form of instruction and receiving information from the body in the form of sensation. So if you look at the transaction between the self and the body, the self is giving some instruction to the body for example, get up, walk, etc. And the self is reading some sensation from the body, for example, sensation of pain, itching, etc. This is something that you can observe how the self is giving instructions to the body 
try to observe it at this moment also and how you are receiving the sensation from the body for example when i am talking to you and i am annotating this slide so i am able to read what is written in the slide this is a sensation coming to me through the body isn't it and i am deciding which word to highlight and which word not to highlight and thus i am sending instruction to the body and then with the help of my hand i am able to highlight certain words in the slide now you see that this is a kind of interaction that is taking place between the self and the body quite regularly it is ultimately the self which is giving some instruction to the body and the self only is reading some sensation from the body so instruction is a is an information so instruction is an information given by the self and sensation is an information received by the self the transaction between the self and the body is only of information and there is no material transaction taking place here i hope you are able to see this that between you and your body there is no material transaction taking place it is only in the form of information so when i am talking to you i am uttering some words so i am selecting which words to speak and then with the help of the body the words are being pronounced isn't it at the same time i am looking at the slide here and i am able to decide what to say at this particular slide so ultimately i am sensing with the help of the body and i am giving instruction to the body so that the words can come out and there is no material transaction taking place here now try to observe the same thing in every activity during the day when you go to sleep what happens when you get up in the morning what happens when you are active during the day what is happening what are you doing in coexistence with the body how come the transaction is taking place between you and your body is there some material transaction taking place there or not try to question it to yourself try to find out for yourself the next thing which is very important to observe is who is taking the decision for the transaction so you'll see that the decision to send instruction to the body is made by the self and the decision to read the sensation from the body is also made by the self so the decision making is always there in the self not in the body as we had discussed earlier the self is the conscious entity and the body is a material entity so in the body there is no conscious activity now this decision making is a conscious activity isn't it so whenever you are making some decision some assuming is involved and that is there in the self not in the body that assuming may be guided by knowing or may be there in the in the absence of knowing or may be there in the absence of knowing isn't it so for example whenever some action is taking place with the help of the body let's say getting up so it is you who decides whether to get up or not so you wake up in the morning and you have to get up from the bed and then you see that the time is only 5 am and you feel that yes there is still more time to sleep and then you decide not to get up but suddenly you remember that you have an assignment to do today and submit today and then you suddenly get up now what is happening here you decided when you decided that you don't have to get up you instructed the body to continue sleeping but when you decided that i have to complete this assignment then you got up and the body acted accordingly isn't it while you are sleeping also you can see that when you feel cold you get some sensation from the body and you try to pull a sheet over your body to protect your body and when you feel that it, the room is very hot right you feel like removing the sheet from your body now every time you'll see that whenever some activity is taking place with the help of the body it is you who is making the decision it is not the body take any other example from your side let's say you are breathing here again you can see that while breathing also it is you who is deciding you can stop your breath for how long decide <laughs> so you'll see that you are deciding whether to continue breathing or not you can stop your breath for some time isn't it you can stop your breath or you can continue with your breath so try to look into all these activities when you start walking and then you lift one foot did the foot go up by itself or you decided who decided whether the left foot has to go up first or the right foot has to go up first it is you who decided while eating also it is you who decided how to put the food in the mouth 
do you have to eat with your hands or do you have to use a spoon for eating what to eat first there are four items in front of you what to eat first what not to eat first now every time you see that the decision is being made by the self not the body so the decision for every transaction is made by the self now this may be a little difficult for you straight away to see this but keep on exploring and verifying now when we do the practice exercises in exercise 2 this will become more evident to you you will be able to observe how the decision is being made by the self every time in every transaction with the body so keep on observing this now let us go further to explore something deeper about the self and the body now the self is there that is you are there isn't it so one thing can be said very clearly that i am i am there and my body is there and i am not my body the body is a material entity i am the conscious entity and i am very much there neither the body is a part of me nor i am a part of the body so i exist as a conscious entity the body exists as a material entity and the two are coexisting can you see this that you are there sometimes we also might have some doubts about this being of the self whether the self is there or not so one thing that is being stated here very clearly is that the self is there and the body is also there next thing that you can observe is that it is you who wants to live it is not the body that wants to live the desire to live is there in you there is no desire in the body there is no want in the body body is just a material entity it just has recognizing and fulfilling as activities it does not have any kind of assuming so it is you who wants to live it's not the body the desire is there in you the natural acceptance is there in you and the body is used as an instrument in the process so for all these activities that you are doing in coexistence of the body the body is being used as an instrument so when i'm talking to you the body is acting as an instrument when i'm watching the slide in front the body is acting as an instrument now in all our activities during the day you can see that the desire is there in you to accomplish something to do something to get something to be something and the body is being used as an instrument it's not that you only want to live you want to live with continuous happiness so the want to live with happiness is there in you and that want is there in continuity now there is something that we had explored uh, in detail also earlier so no need to recap this particular part only thing to see very clearly is that the want to live with continuous happiness is there in the self not in the body not to fulfill this want to live with continuous happiness we have to fulfill the needs of the body isn't it because the body is my instrument so there is need for physical facility for the body and we'll see that the need for physical facility is there only in three heads one for nurturing the body two for protecting the body and three for rightly utilizing the body so for nurturing the body we require food isn't it for protecting the body we require clothes shelter and for rightly utilizing the body we require instruments and you can see that the need for physical facility is only under three heads either it is for nurturing the body or it is protecting the body or rightly utilizing the body whatever else that we might assume to be a need may not be a need find it this out whether the needs can be classified into these three heads for the body or is there some other head is there some other purpose of the physical facility try to make it out now about the self you can further observe that to understand and to live in harmony at all levels of my being from self to the entire existence is my program of action for continuous happiness so when i am able to see that my want is basically to live with continuity of happiness then i have to make the right program for it and what is the program that emerged in the previous course through our exploration that there are four levels of living for a human being individual family society nature and existence and 
uh, we need to understand the harmony at all these levels. We need to live in harmony at all these levels, right from self to the entire existence. And then only I can fulfill my need for continuity of happiness. So I have to understand the self, I have to understand the rest of nature, I have to understand the space, I have to understand the entire existence and to live accordingly, isn't it, in harmony. Now, fulfilling this entire program, the complete program, you see that whatever we do with the physical facility is a very small part of my program. Now, what we do with the physical facility? So we do production of physical facility. Production means enriching the physical facility, adding to the physical facility protection of physical facility that is preserving it so that the physical facility is there for our use and not getting destroyed and thirdly we work for right utilization of the physical facility now when you talk about the physical facility you can see that there are these three programs to be taken care of either we produce the physical facility or protect the physical facility or rightly utilize the physical facility so let me take an example let's say you have one quintal of wheat in your house now you sow the wheat as seed in the land and then after some time you get a yield, you get a crop of wheat production. So one quintal of wheat may multiply to 100 quintals of wheat. So what you have done, you have enriched the physical facility that is wheat, you have added to the amount. So that is production of physical facility. Now you bring the wheat to your house and protect it so that it is not rotten in the rain, it is not eaten up by the insects or not destroyed by something else. So you protect the wheat and then you rightly utilize it by consuming it as food. So if somebody is making liquor out of wheat and not utilizing the wheat as food, then this is kind of misuse. So we rightly utilize the physical facility. In a similar manner, we can look for all these things. Our clothes, we do produce, we protect and we rightly utilize houses, instruments like mobile, other gadgets, computer, laptop. Okay. All these things that you can see, vehicles, we produce them, we protect them and we rightly utilize them. But one thing which is very significant to observe here is that whatever you do with the physical facilities is only a very small part of my program. So one a number uh, has been given as less than one fourth because there are four levels of living. And when I have to fulfill the needs of the body, then I require physical facilities. So if you can see that at the level of individual, one part is the self, the other part is the body. And whatever we do with the physical facilities is to ensure the fulfillment of the needs of the body. So it is even less than one fourth because there are four levels of living. This is just to signify that unknowingly we have given a very high priority to physical facilities while in our living, the physical facility occupies a very small part. Isn't it? Try to observe this. So explore about this, try to verify this. Is that true for you or not? What is your complete program? Can production of physical facility be our complete program? Can we invest all our time and energy, forsake every other thing for the production of physical facility or for the protection of physical facility? Isn't it? So that cannot be my complete program. Unknowingly, civilizationally, we are trying to attribute too much of importance to physical facility getting too much involved with the production of physical facility or protection of physical facility. And that also we are not able to do rightly. So it may be the case that while producing the physical facility, we are destroying the rest of nature. So even though we are involving ourselves too much in production of physical facility, but at the same time, we are creating problems in the nature which can, which can destroy our health, isn't it? Which can be uh, impeding to our living in harmony at various levels of our living, isn't it? So observe this. Now, the next thing which is very important is that it is the self which is the seer, doer and enjoyer that is experiencer, not the body. So I use the body as an instrument for the fulfillment of my program. And in my entire program, it is me who is the seer. The seer means the one who sees, the one who knows, the one who understands. Doer, one who takes decisions. And enjoyer, experiencer, one who feels happy or unhappy. The body being a material unit can neither see nor do nor enjoy. Put it, putting it very rightly. So it is me who is the seer and doer and enjoyer and not the body. The body being a physiochemical 
entity can only serve as an instrument. Now we'll go into detail of all this. Now we'll try to look into all these details, like how I am the seer, how I am the doer, how I am the enjoyer. So seer means the one that sees or understands. So when I'm talking to you, when I'm delivering this lecture and trying to convey something to you, it is you who is going to understand, not the body. Through the body, you are getting some sensation, you are able to read the words, but it is you who assigns the meaning to these words, isn't it? For example, if you are given something in your hand and you conclude that this is a pen, it is not your eyes that concluded this, it is you that concluded this. The self sees via the eyes, the eyes don't see themselves. Now the eyes are a part of the body, an organ of the body, and it is only working as an instrument for the body. So there is some physiochemical thing in front of the eyes and the sight is created. So an image is formed on the retina of the eye and from the retina, the image goes to the brain and from the brain, it goes to you. And it is you who finds out what is the meaning. Now you'll see that every time you might see the pen in a different way. So let's say somebody may put the pen like this in front of you. The other person may put the pen in like this in front of you. Somebody may even hide the pen and not be able to, you are not able to see the pen, but you are able to make out this is a pen. And it is you only who is able to make out that the pen is going to be used for writing. Now you can see that in different situations, we have different look of the pen. Sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like, sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like this. Every time a different kind of image is formed, but it is you who concludes that it is the pen that is going to be used for writing. So the eyes just have the image of the pen. The image gets transferred to you and you are able to make out whether the, this is a pen or not and what is going to be the use for the pen. So like that, all the five senses are just the instruments that enable the self to see something outside. And what are those five senses? So the eyes are there, ears are there, nose is there, the skin is there, and the tongue is there. Now from the eyes, we get the sight. From the ears, we get the sound. From the nose, we get the smell. From the skin, we get the touch. And from the tongue, we get the taste. And what is all this? This is all information that comes from the body to me. And it is I who decide whether I have to go for this particular sensation or not, this particular sight or not, this particular touch or not, this particular taste or not, this particular sound or not, isn't it? So just like you see outside, you can also see within without using the sensation in the body as a means to see. For example, can you see your thoughts? Can you see your imagination? Can you see what is going on in your imagination? Now we have started the practice exercise of observing your imagination. Now, who is observing your imagination? It is you who is observing. What is the role of the body in observing your imagination? Now, the imagination is not something outside you. It is there in you, isn't it? So what is the role of the body in observing your imagination? So you can see that you are feeling happy. You are feeling you know, unhappy, getting angry, getting sad, getting depressed, getting excited sometimes, and so many things. And it is you who is able to see this. Thus, it is the self who sees or understands, sometimes with the help of the body, sometimes without the help of the body. So it is the self who sees or understands, sometimes with the help of the body, sometimes without the help of the body. I don't require the body every time, isn't it? For example, you have been living in your house for a long time, and you maybe you can also make out where the things are put in your house with your closed eyes because you do remember where do I put my pen, where do I put my pillow, where do I put my books. So with your closed eyes also, you are able to make out where the items in the room are kept. In the process of seeing, the body is used as an instrument. And that also I'll say temporarily, not every time. It's you who decides whether to use the body for this particular purpose or not. So the transaction between the self and the body is taking place with your decision. 
and we'll see another thing that there may be so many things in front of your eyes but if you're looking for something you focus your attention there there may be so many sounds coming in your room but if you are playing some music which you are fond of you pay attention to that music you ignore the other sounds maybe the fan is moving but you ignore the sound of movement of the fan maybe the tube light is flickering but you ignore the sound of flickering of the tube light there may be some sound coming from outside your room but you ignore that and you listen to the music now who decides whether to listen to the music or not try to find it out there will be so many things for you to explore here now when i am saying all this to you who is understanding you or your body through your body you are getting the sound you are getting the sight but you are able to make out the meaning of what is being said isn't it if some word is not clear to you you may not be able to get the meaning if the word is clear to you you are able to get the meaning as simple as this and the clarity is there in you not the body the understanding is there in you not the body that's why it is being said that it is the self who sees or understands similarly you can see that it is the self which is the doer doer means the one that does who takes decision to do self is the one who decides self decides what to do what not to do so you plan something for that day that today i'll get up at this particular time go to my college do this particular assignment come back home and in the evening i'll go to the particular market now ultimately we will see that it is you who is deciding what to do and what not to do and the body is only working as an instrument while getting up from the bed while going to sleep while going to the market while attending the classes isn't it the body is used to express the decision of the self if required not every time for example self instructs the body to walk and the body walks say you are sitting you put the body in a comfortable position and you just leave it like that maybe you have leaned on the wall you just leave it like that now you are not sending instructions to the body again and again unless you have to change your posture so it is you who sends information to the body instruction to the body to change the posture to walk to sit to stand to talk isn't it and that you keep on doing from time to time your activities that is the activities in the imagination are going on all the time but the instructions being given to the body are not there all the time it is as per the need however you may see that self may or may not use the body to execute its decision another thing that you can see that the self decides and the self may or may not use the body to execute the decision so you may be thinking so many things within yourself so you are lying in your bed and thinking that if today was a holiday i would have gone to watch a movie i would have gone to these many places i would have called so many people now it is you who is only imagining about all this right and trying to decide something and leaving something else but you are not executing the decision every time so what you think is your decision so for example what i think is my decision i do that thinking within myself and there is no role of the body in that thinking process that thinking is going on in me i do not require the body to execute the thinking i only require the body when i have to get into action isn't it so the body is used as an instrument as and when required again you can explore this try to take at least 10 activities that you do in a day and then try to find out who was the doer was it the self or the body so getting up from the bed getting ready for the college attending the classes taking lunch during break doing your assignments coming back home in the evening taking some rest in the evening going for a walk in the evening taking sleep during night so many activities you are doing during the day right and the body is only working as an instrument while you are the doer you are the decision maker so this thing you can see so this thing you can see that the body is being used as an instrument as and when required as per the need and it is the self only that decides every time try to observe in all your activities so that this is more clear to you 
Now going further, we can see how the self is the enjoyer, that is the experiencer. So enjoyer means the one that experiences happiness or unhappiness. Now who feels happy, the self or the body? What do you think? You listen to some music and feel happy about that. Now you'll see that the sound of the music is coming to your ears. From ears, it is coming to you. And you feel whether the music is enjoyable or not. Say if somebody is fond of Western music and somebody is playing classical music, you don't feel happy or you do not feel like enjoying that. But if you are fond of Western music and somebody is playing Western music only, you feel like enjoying that. Now the sound is coming to your body every time, but you are assigning some meaning to that. Maybe you are fond of a particular song. Somebody is playing that song, but maybe a friend of yours also was fond of that song and is no longer a friend of yours. Somehow the relationship has not been able to continue. So the moment you listen to that song, you do not get that same feeling of happiness as you used to get earlier. Now, what has happened here? The sound is coming the same way to your ears, reaching you the same way, but you have assigned some meaning to that sound now. That particular sound, that particular music made you remember your friend who is no longer your friend and then you feel sad about it. You are feeling happy about the music sometime earlier, now you are feeling sad about it. What is happening essentially? It is the self that was enjoying and not the body. In the body only some physiochemical activity is taking place, isn't it? But your assuming about the music has changed now. So it is the self that enjoys or uh, experiences. Try to verify it about yourself. Try to take some more examples. So you'll see that I am the one that feels enthused or depressed. Now, whether you are feeling enthusiastic about something or feeling depressed about something is going to take place in you. But the impact may be there on the body. If you feel depressed, it will have an impact on the body, on your health, on your digestion, on your breath. If you feel enthused, it will again have some impact on the body. Isn't it? but it's only the impact of what is happening in the self. If you are happy, you will have one kind of impact on the body. If you feel unhappy, you will have another kind of impact on the body. Similarly, you can see that I am the one that feels angry and delighted. Similarly, you can see that it is the self that feels angry or delighted, not the body. Who lost temper, you or your body? When you lost your temper, you shouted on the other. Now the body was used as an instrument. In the same situation, you might not have lost your temper and your conduct would have been different. Is that true? Somebody said hello to you in the morning and you felt very glad about it. You also said hello. But you suddenly remember that the previous day you had said hello to this particular person and he or she had not responded. And then your response has changed now. You feel that I should not be saying hello now because the other person had ignored me yesterday. Does this happen? So you'll see ultimately it is the self that enjoys your experiences. The body only works as an instrument. That's why it is being said that the self is the enjoyer, the experiencer and not the body. The body is merely an instrument. So in all these three activities like seeing, doing and enjoying, you can take multiple examples. This is something that you can do as a homework for yourself today. Try to take examples of at least 10 to 20 activities that during the day and try to make out how the self was the seer, how the self was the doer, how the self was the enjoyer and the body acted merely as an instrument. So essentially what is being said that self is the seer, doer and enjoyer. Now who is the seer essentially? So we had talked about the self in uh, brief only, I will not say in much detail. We'll be talking about the self in much more detail in the following lectures. Now in the self, we could see that there are two blocks. There is one block B1, that is the block of right understanding. And then there is one block B2, which is the block of imagination. So being the seer essentially means we are talking about this block B1, the higher activities of the self in this block is the main seer. It is able to see the reality say a tree for example in relationship harmony and coexistence which is the essence which is definite universal and continuous so essentially it is the block b1 the block of right understanding the dimension of knowing that is the seer that is able to see the reality 
Now, as we go further, we'll see that the self is the seer, that is the pure observer. We have to be the pure observer to be able to see the reality, and the reality is whole existence. So ultimately, it is me who understands the reality. It is me who understands the human being, the relation between human being and human being, the other orders in the nature, the space, the entire existence. And when we are able to observe the entire existence, we are able to see how there is relationship in the entire existence, there is harmony in the entire existence, there is coexistence in the entire existence. We can also see that the essence of all this is essentially definite. We can also see that relationship, harmony and coexistence is something that is definite in itself, universal and continuous. It is essentially block B1, that is the dimension of knowing, that is the seer. Now, when it comes to doer, the decision maker, it is block B2, that is the activities in the imagination of the self in this block, and they are the doer. These activities recognize the relationship with other units and work out the details of how to fulfill that relationship. That is thinking about this, analyzing about this, comparing, trying to chalk out uh, the plans and programs, making the decisions. So the decision making is taking place in block B2, the block of imagination. Here we have activities like imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing. So when we are able to make a decision, we select that particular thing and we are able to execute it. Now, when we talk about the enjoyer, both block B1 and block B2 are the enjoyer and they enjoy the super bliss, bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness at the level of realization, understanding, contemplation, comparing and testing. So we'll talk about all these words. They may seem difficult to you at this point of time, but as we go along, these words will be more clear to you. The meanings will be more clear to you. So what is being said here is that block B1 is the seer, block B2 is the doer, and both block B1 and block B2, that is the block of imagination and the block of knowing, are the enjoyer. So look into all these details when we talk about higher activities of the self, where we'll explain the diagram in the previous slide. So to sum up the whole thing, we can see that human being is coexistence of self and body. Self is the seer, doer, enjoyer, and it is central to human existence the body being a material entity. The need of the self is continuous happiness. And for this, the program of the self is to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all the four levels of living. And what are those four levels? So the first level is as an individual, <clears throat> as a human being. The second level is as a member of family. Thirdly, as a member of society. And fourthly, as a unit in the nature and existence. An understanding of harmony, feeling of harmony is going to take place at the level of self only. The body is used as an instrument of the self. The transaction between self and body is only in the form of information and is decided by the self every time. So this is what we try to bring out in this lecture. Now for self-reflection, there is some homework for you today. So observe the imagination going on in you, that is yourself at this moment and observe the desire, thought and expectation in this. So try to observe your imagination and try to make out what is the desire in your imagination? What is the thought in your imagination? What is the expectation in your imagination? Then next, are you able to see that your happiness and unhappiness depends on your own state of imagination? For example, when you are thinking of taking revenge from the other with a feeling of opposition, what is your state? Is it of happiness or unhappiness? How much of this is dependent on the state of the body? Try to make it out. Next thing, suppose you are sitting in an air conditioned room with your director with whom you have a feeling of opposition. Will you be comfortable within? So for self-reflection as a homework, there are three things to do today. The first is observe the imagination going on in yourself at this moment and observe the desire, thought and expectation in this. So in your imagination, you can make out what is the desire? What is the thought? What is the imagination? Can you make it out? How can I distinguish my desire and thought? How can I distinguish my thought and expectation? So let me say very briefly that desire is essentially what you want to be as a human being, as a member of family, as a member of society, as a unit of nature. That is your desire. Thought is how to accomplish it. And expectation is basically selecting and testing what to try to analyze within yourself, what to try to compare within yourself. The second assignment is 
are you able to see that your happiness and unhappiness depends on your own state of imagination for example when you are thinking of taking revenge from the other with a feeling of opposition what is your state is it of happiness or unhappiness how much of this is dependent on the state of the body can you make it out thirdly suppose you are sitting in an air conditioned room with your boss with whom you have a feeling of opposition so will you be comfortable within or uncomfortable within happy or unhappy within so the air conditioned room can condition your body okay but what is going on in your imagination is something different why all these exercises so that you can clearly make out the difference between the self and the body you can make out the difference in the response of self and the body you can see that it is the self which is the seer the doer and enjoyer and not the body so do these exercises seriously now going further to see how the self is the seer doer and enjoyer we we'll see that essentially in the self the block b1 which is the block of higher activities of the self is the main seer it is able to see the reality now if you remember block b1 is the block of right understanding right feeling that is knowing that is realization and this is the block where the actual process of seeing does take place and this is the block where the seeing does take place now when i am able to see the reality i can see that there is relationship there is harmony and there is coexistence in the existence and this is the essence and this is something which is definite universal and continuous so normally when we see something outside we are able to get the sensation of the form of that particular object particularly when we are talking about the material objects say a tree and we are not able to see through the eyes the relationship harmony or coexistence which is associated with the tree but in the domain of block b1 in the domain of knowing we are able to see this and this is actually the meaning of being able to see the reality as it is now when it comes to doer block b2 is the doer and in block b2 we have imagination so the activities in the imagination of the self in this block actually uh, are the ones uh, that can be said to be the doer now if you look at the doer the doing takes place in block b2 which is the block of imagination uh, and here we have activities of imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing and here the decision making takes place so in block b1 understanding knowing takes place and in block b2 decision making takes place so based on the understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence i recognize the relationship with other units and then work out the details of how to fulfill this relationship so here is the block where we plan where we uh, analyze where we detail upon where we perceive so this is the block where the thinking takes place the analyzing and comparing takes place the selecting and <coughs> the selecting and testing takes place now if you look at the doer block b2 is the doer that is the block of imagination and here we have the activities of imagination which is made up of imaging analyzing comparing selecting and testing and here actually the decision making takes place so in this block uh, i recognize the relationship with other units and work out the details of how to fulfill this relationship so this detailing of uh relationship this working out how to fulfill the relationships takes place in block b2 and this is where we analyze where we compare where we think so this is the block of doing now if you look at the enjoyer both block b1 and block b2 are the enjoyer now in block b1 i enjoy super bliss bliss and satisfaction and in block b2 i enjoy peace and happiness so now this takes place at the level of realization understanding contemplation comparing and testing so these words might seem difficult to you at this point of time but as we go along these words will become easier for you to understand and we'll see how these activities are there in the self so we we'll look into the details of it when we talk about higher activities of the self uh, where we'll explain the diagram in the next few slides so in the next few slides we just have a glimpse on the activities of the self we will not be detailing upon all the activities so when we discuss the higher level activities of the self this will become more clear 
Now here you can see block B1 is the block in purple where we have activities of realization, authentication, understanding, determination and contemplation written. And, and here the seeing takes place. Now, if you look at block B2, that is there in the yellow color, we have activities of imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing. And here the decision making takes place. So this block B2 is the doer. And when it comes to being the enjoyer, so the enjoying is there in block B1 as well as block B2. So in block B1, there is enjoyment of super bliss, bliss and uh, satisfaction. While in block B2, there is enjoyment of peace and happiness. So in block B1, at the level of realization, there is clarity of coexistence in existence. That is clarity of submergence of nature in space. At the level of understanding, there is clarity of harmony in the nature. That is self-organization in the nature or innateness in the nature. And at the level of contemplation, there is clarity of relationship that is natural characteristic, that is the participation in the larger order. So the clarity, the seeing, the knowing, the understanding takes place here in block B1. And that is actually the meaning of seeing. And if you look at block B2, then here I work out the details of how to ensure the coexistence, harmony and justice uh, in my living so that they are able to guide my senses, health and profit. Again, we'll detail upon all these words in the following lectures. And at the level of selecting and testing, there is activity of giving instructions for fulfillment outside accordingly. Now, whatever takes place in the self uh, gets instructed to the body. And then at the level of body, there is behavior with the human being, work with the rest of nature and participation in the larger order. Now, little more detail here, but we'll not go into all those details. So we can see that at one end, there is realization within of the coexistence. And then this guides the lower activities and there is activity completeness in the self. With that, the expression is there outside through behavior, work and participation. And ultimately that leads to universal human order that goes from one generation to another generation forming the human tradition. So this is something that we're trying to refer to. So you can see that in the purple block, the actual process of knowing or understanding or seeing is taking place and the decision making is taking place in block b2 but there is enjoying in both the blocks b1 as well as b2 now put in one slide as we were discussing earlier we can see that uh, the self is central to human existence so with all these details we can make out how the self is central to human existence and we can see how the body is an instrument of the self. So since I am the seer, I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, and the body is just a material entity acting as an instrument for me. So I am central to human existence. I am central to my existence. Essentially, if you see the purpose of the body is to help develop the self, to help seeing in the self, to help doing on the basis of seeing in the self and to help enjoying happiness in continuity in the self. That's how it is being said that the self is central to human existence. So to sum up the lecture today, the key takeaway from the lecture is that it is the self which is central to human existence and it is the self which is the seer, doer and enjoyer, not the body. The body is merely a physiochemical entity that is working as an instrument for the self. Thank you all.